With the Nipex neck strip, you can replace these three tools with just this one. Nipex have been really clever here. They've taken the multi-strip 10, a tool I've had for years. This one's all battle-hardened because it's well used and added a clever ferrule crimper underneath. So let's dive in and take a look. Let's have a look at the cable cutter first. It'll handle up to a 10 millimeter square copper stranded conductor, or if this was a single conductor, up to six millimeter square. Cuts through them pretty effortlessly. They do go off like bullets. Coming up in this week's... What was that? At the other end of the scale, we can handle this security cable here, which is 0.25 millimeter. So again, good for that. Or in the in-between range, we've got some tri-rated switch gear cable here. Again, so great, great little cutter. Let's have a look at the automatic stripper function. We've got this depth guide here, which allows you to precisely set the amount of insulation you're going to remove from the conductor. So let's try it on this 10 millimeter copper, which is the biggest size the stripper can handle. Again, so that's pretty effortless, a nice clean finish uh, on the cable there. Um, try with some 0.5 tri-rated cable, so you see a, a regular cable if you're doing the panel building. But again, effortless stripping with that and then combined with that cutter, that's a really smooth action. When we look at small conductors, this will go down to an amazing 0.03 millimeter squared. I can't think of any cable that we've ever used that goes that small. Uh, typically the smallest one we see is this security cable. So again, effortless stripping of that. Now this is a very fine cable and that's where it brings in the function here where we can adjust the pressure uh, on those blades. So if it was uh, particularly cold or this was cutting through the conductors inside the, uh, the, the cable, you won't have to adjust it. So if I go up to maximum pressure, you'll see what happens uh, on this cable here. You see it actually chops the end up. So too much, too much pressure. Again, try that, you'll see. Yeah, so I would have to adjust that under those circumstances so we don't uh, completely destroy the cable. So we'll go in close there, you can see all of the cores are intact. Also, when we look at another common application, terminating things like uh, the fly leads that we find on the RCBOs, the manufacturers sometimes use exotic material. So this is a very flexible class six conductor with a silicon outer sheath you might need to uh, adjust the depth of that if it was cutting through individual cores. A great application for this tool is when you're shortening the leads on RCBOs, on this case an AFDD. So we've got an expensive one here. So we can just chop the old ferrule off, strip to length. Uh, I put a slight twist in to restore what was in the conductor in the first place. And we select our ferrule. Now today we're on the, uh, the German DIN. 46228 standard, so we know that's a grey ferrule we're looking for. Got one on the bench here. So again, the biggest challenge in this is my eyes. So I'll just put that in there, slightly twist the ferrule as we go on. Bring our tool in, and here's the really clever bit that ferrule crimper underneath. This is the maximum size it'll do, four millimeters squared. In we go. There we go, and our ferrule connection. Uh, do you like the copper sticking out the end or not? I've just got a tiny bit out there. Comment uh, what you think of that, but again, give that the old tug test and that is not coming off. So four millimeters, the biggest size ferrule that will do at the other end of the scale, will do 0.25 millimeter squared. So we're gonna put some on this security cable here. So I'll just tidy the ends up with the cable cutter. And then we'll not do that one because that's the plastic bedding material. Let's pick this blue one here. Set this to six millimeters for the ferrule. And the smallest one here is this light blue one. So we've had to step out of the German DIN system back into Weed Muller here. And the biggest problem here is my eyes getting this in there. So just excuse me on that. Push that in there. And then into our ferrule crimper. Nice and easy. And again, that's well, well ferruled. You get that? Well ferrule, will ferrule. You can also fit twin ferrules up to two by 2.5 millimeters squared. So we'll just prepare one of those here. So just, that was a little bit more tricky to judge the correct wire length when you're stripping back the outer insulation on the twin. So there's a bit more copper showing at the end, but let's crimp it first and then deal with that. Here's the ferrule crimper. We've got a nice, nice square rectangular crimp. I'll just deal with that excess copper 
with the super nips. So this tool is a no-brainer for people who do a lot of panel work with that cut, strip, ferrule function, but I think it's good for general electricians who possibly the occasional ferruler, if you're in consumer units, if you're possibly putting something into a fuse spur, again, you can just easily prepare your uh, flexible cables. You might need a short and a lead. Really tactile tool. Put the ferrules on. There's good, uh, there's consumable parts for it. You can get replacement blades. You can get a different, uh, you can get a replacement depth stop if you lose that. But again, just slip those ferrules on there. Now it is really simple and I'm not picking up multiple tools. Um, so I think this is a keeper and so much so that Nipex are even giving you an area you can put your name on. So I'm just gonna fill in my initials there since the rest of the team aren't around. And I think I will be keeping this. You can attach a lanyard uh, to this as well if you're someone who uh, drops their tools um, so you don't hit people on the head. So this is going in my toolbox. If you want another keeper, check out the Nipex Super Nips, which are a great combination if you need to do, again, fine work with wires. Like most of the world, we're working in metric, but if you flip this tool over, you can go to the past, or what we call American Wire Gauge.